I am on earlies this week, so I'm not honestly expecting to do loads. It's literally going to be a case of wake up, go to work, come home and be exhausted because I hate getting up early. Like I hate it so much. Don't get me wrong, eight, nine o'clock, perfect. Five in the morning, are you having a laugh? So yeah, expect zombified Kirsten going forward. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're starting a weekly vlog on a Sunday. But to be fair, tomorrow I am up ridiculously early. I'm on earlies for work next week. What have I done here? There we go. So yeah, I'm not gonna be vlogging tomorrow morning because I'm up at five in the morning. I thought it'd be best to start off the vlog today and also because I have started a new book. So this book is into the Crooked Place by Alexander Christo. This is a book my sister got me for Christmas. I went into this not knowing what to expect at all. I literally picked it up because I enjoyed Alexander Christo's other work, which I have spoken about quite a lot, which is To Kill a Kingdom, which was a Little Mermaid retelling, a standalone story, and one that I really enjoyed. And this one is a start of what appears to be a new series, and it's something that is quite interesting. So this one is set in this world where there is magic but the magic is very scarce. It's something that years ago there were wars over the magic and as a result there's not much magic left at all. Now we are following four different characters and they are all part of this kind of undercity to the normal city. One of our characters, Tavia, she is a busker, so she is someone that actually sells these magic charms, does a little bit of a con to make them seem more magical than what they are, but then during the night she dabbles in dark magic and sells that, which is strictly illegal. Then we have Wesley, and Wesley is an underboss, so he is someone that controls the buskers, that controls more of like, almost like the crime lord, but he reports to someone called a kingpin who is the crime lord, and the underbosses are kind of like his, yeah, under crime lords that control different cities, and Wesley is someone that absolutely loves his city, and has made lots of very difficult decisions to get to where he is to create a great city because he loves it so much. And then we're following Karam. Now Karam is Wesley's bodyguard, she is a fighter. There's something about her that you just that you learn about her that's to do with her lineage and everything so there's definitely more to her than what there seems and then our final character is Saxony now Saxony works in the crook she's kind of I think more of a barmaid I haven't read too much of her perspective yet but again she's harboring a secret that could definitely cause her a lot of problems now all four of these people are interwoven together so you have Tavia and Wesley who are very close friends growing up but because of Wesley's decisions they have kind of grown apart then you have Karam who is obviously Wesley's bodyguard but she loves Saxony they're not together anymore but you definitely know that they have history and a connection with each other and Saxony is Tavia's best friend so all four of them are interconnected they don't all like each other and they all have their own different secrets apart from Tavia Tavia seems to be the person that wears her heart on the sleeve she's very upfront very honest all the other characters seem to have their own secrets their own things that are going on and poor Tavia doesn't have a clue. So yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. I've only read the first nine chapters, we're up to page 102 and we're just, we've got a bit of background for each of these so you do have four different perspectives in this book and you start off with Tavia who is selling magic. At the minute we've just been building the world, building the city and the corruptness that's going through it and we're just starting to see the developments of a deeper plot. At the minute, I'm enjoying this. You can definitely tell it's more YA fantasy compared to last week's adult fantasy. And that's not to say it's a bad thing. It isn't something that I've been reading a lot of, but this is one that I can definitely say I'm intrigued by. It's kind of more of an urban fantasy sit setting with the underworld vibe going on, which I really like. This is also working for a prompt from the Aurelium Readathon hosted by G over at Book Roast. I did mention this at the end of last week's vlog that I am softly taking part to become a necromancer but I am splitting it over the course of two months instead of trying to do all eight books in one month. And this one is fulfilling the prompt of conjuration. Conjuration. 
Conjuring words um, and that is to read a book with a light source on the cover and as you can see we have lots of buildings with lights in so that worked perfectly for this so yeah this is the plan to read this one this week because it's not massively long like I've got 300 pages left to go I am thinking to also pick up one of my shorter books for the month maybe the Sherlock Holmes or the manga we'll see see how the week goes as I said I am on earlies this week so I'm not honestly expecting to do loads it's literally going to be a case of wake up go to work come home and be exhausted because I hate getting up early like I hate it so much I am not a massive early bird like don't get me wrong eight nine o'clock perfect five in the morning are you having a laugh so yeah expect zombified Kirsten going forward um but we will definitely be carrying on and reading this I was actually really surprised that I managed to get another 100 pages read it seems to be about my goal every single day even if I have work is 100 pages which is very nice because it definitely feels back to how I used to be although I did normally get away with reading a little bit more each day but it is nice to get back into it so yeah right I have once again forgotten to say that I hope you're all doing well and your week's been going well and to let me know what's been going on and what you're reading and everything I apologize we will get back into the swing of things eventually I promise I um, no idea how long this vlog's gonna go on for I've kind of given up with having a set time frame so like Normally I'd be very religious in that I would update every other day. It would normally be a Tuesday to Monday affair and no, nah, we're doing this a lot more relaxed. We're just gonna see how it goes and yeah, go from there. Right, I have got lots of to do today. It is my day off, so I need to get another video filmed. I've got some editing and stuff to do. Me and my partner are also hopefully going to the cinema a bit later if he wakes up in time. So yeah, we've got quite a bit to be getting on with, so I'm going to go and do that and I will catch up with you when I've read a bit more of Into the Crooked Place. Good afternoon, I'm tired. I'm very tired. <laughs> Waking up and doing an early shift is not the one, but I have finished work, I am back home, I have made myself look semi-presentable for you guys, and I have made progress with Into the Crooked Place. And I've on, oh, I've actually made 100 pages progress, exactly. I am on chapter 19. Now a few things that I didn't talk about, which I desperately meant to, because it's awesome, is look at these chapters. You have a little bat at the top of each chapter, which I think is awesome. I love it, it works so well. Is my camera gonna focus? Yes. And also, the map itself is really lovely. It's quite a simple map, but I really like it. And yeah, the bat detailing, love it. Love to see it. So in this one, we're actually having the plot develop a bit more where we have Wesley who is starting to stand up against the Kingpin, go against what is happening, which is the black magic that is now causing magic sickness that is coming into play because of the Kingpin. He is having this pretty much war against the officials and has decided that, you know, it doesn't matter about the casualties. Wesley, who we already know loves the city, is like, no, this is my city, I'm not allowing it. And so he starts banding up with the three other main characters in this to try and stop it. And we're just seeing that progression. I'm not gonna talk too much about like the plot in terms of what they're doing to try and stop it because spoilers, obviously. It does feel very, <sighs> I, I want to say predictable but also not predictable at the same time I like it I like how we're doing it how the characters are progressing and stuff it just feels I suppose a bit heavy-handed at times but in general this is an enjoyable read really quick easy read the chapters are really short as well and I am enjoying it like it's one of those ones that I can say is probably not the best one that I've ever read but I do like how characters I like the different things that they deal with, as I've already mentioned. I like the fact that we're slowly seeing some of their secrets come to the forefront and how each of them is learning about each other's secrets and the feelings of betrayal it can spark in some of them and just having that and seeing how they're connecting and growing is really good, actually. I do like that. I think I'm liking that more than the actual plot line. I'm enjoying seeing how these characters interact with one another. 
So for that, I really like it. I'm also really intrigued about the magic in this. It is so interesting and it's something that just not many people have access to anymore, but they do have these charms that give them that little burst of magic for a very short amount of time. And the way they use it and utilize and make the most out of it is just, yeah. I, I really like that as well. So I think it's just the plot feels very similar to other plots that I've read, but the actual characters, the magic system in this, I do really enjoy. So yeah, I mean, yeah, what can I say? It's a fun, easy read and I am enjoying it. It works really well for like an early shift because I am so tired. I probably wouldn't have the brain power for any plot that's actually intricate because I wouldn't be able to keep up with it. I'm just way too tired for that. So this is working out perfectly. I have, well, I think 160, not 160 pages to go, that would be great, uh, 260 pages to go. And honestly, with the way I'm going, I do feel like I'm going to get it finished by the middle of the week. So I will have time to pick up another book. And yeah, honestly, I, it is something that I, I can see everything going really badly. Like everything, I think my problem with this is everything's been going so easy. There has been a few little complications, but nothing major. And I guess I just want something to happen where it goes really wrong, really bad. Our main characters are just, they have no options. They've got no easy way out. I want that because this is going way too smoothly. And I think that's what it's missing from the plot is like, I, I just, I don't know, maybe it's going. And I hope it is because that would make it that really like, oh, I'm gripped now. I think, yeah, that that's what I'm missing from this. It's not that it's too young or anything like that. It's it's just, it's missing that bit of tension. Everything feels too easy at the moment, which makes it an easy read, but also doesn't get you gripped because you've just got like, there's no high stakes and I want high stakes. So yeah, let's see what we get from this. Overall, my day off was really nice yesterday. Me and my partner did go to the cinema and we watched Morbius think that's what it, anyway it's it was okay uh I mean don't quote me on that because I'm not someone that watches tv I don't have a tv in my room I don't have Netflix I don't go downstairs to watch tv with the family unless it's the very occasional like documentary on say like the Berlin the fall of the Berlin family I like that documentary I watched that but otherwise I don't watch tv I don't really go to the cinema it's something that me and my partner do together occasionally because he likes going to the cinema but as a whole, I don't tend to watch anything or even rewatch films. So he was asking me like, would you rewatch this? And I'm like, no, but then I wouldn't normally anyway. So I feel like that's a really, I'm not helpful to go for. But I mean, overall it was okay. The ending was a bit lackluster and I feel like the villain itself wasn't villainous. Like it definitely felt like someone that was just letting loose for the first time ever. And I can understand that, but just letting loose for a really extreme point and unnecessary um but it didn't feel like a proper scary villain but there we go um and that's it that's it i haven't done anything else i do need to actually go and eat because i'm hungry start editing a film and then probably just collapse because i'm so worn out but we've only got two more earlies to get through and hopefully actually maybe at the end of the earlies i will have finished this book because i did make quite a bit of progress and i didn't read any of it yesterday so the fact that I've read another 100 pages means that I could definitely crack out another 100 tomorrow and the next day. So yeah, okay. Right, I'm rambling. I'm gonna go and eat. I'm hungry. Another exhausted update and please excuse the hair. We've just had a shower because honestly, I was so tired. I couldn't even string words together. And even now we're struggling, but we're getting there. I only have 120 pages left. I managed to actually read a really good chunk of this today. And I'm, I'm still feeling how I felt yesterday, which is I want something that's just that little bit darker to happen in this book for things just to start going wrong because I feel like everything is going so easy. When I first started reading this today, we got a fifth perspective, which I wasn't expecting. It was literally two pages long and it was a character that we had met, but I didn't think had any actual impact on the storyline. I thought they had done what they were needed for and then that was it. But I liked that little snippet actually. That had something that was a lot darker and made me think, oh, things are going to start going down that darker path and it's going to get really intense. 
But then we went back to our four main characters and it just kind of carried on in their camaraderie that's a little bit tense because everyone's like, oh, Wesley's so horrible, but at the same time, it's nothing major, you know, it just feels very light-hearted. And then we do get a sixth perspective, which again, wasn't expecting, and again, is that little bit darker. It's actually showing what's going on in the city because our four main characters have left the city to go on this kind of quest and we're seeing the result of them leaving the city and I like that. I think it's really good and really dark but then we've gone back to our four main characters and back to that light-heartedness again and even something that they're going through now which is meant to be quite a hard trial doesn't feel that hard or high stakes. So yeah I I'm really hoping in these last 120 pages we get more of that darker gritty feel because that in the book is really good and also I made a connection when I was on my way home today and that is the magic in this what's happening in the city feels really similar to what happened in the third book of A Darker Shade of Magic it feels really really similar to that and if you've read that book then you'll understand what I mean with this if you haven't then you haven't uh, and I'm not going to go too much into it because, you know, spoilers and everything. But it does remind me of that. Not exactly the same, but I get that same vibe and it's similar things that are happening. And I just, I mean, I'm intrigued and I want more of that darkness in this book. And I just, just not getting it. It's been 90% lightheartedness and I want it to be a bit more like 60-40, you know? I don't mind lightheartedness in the book, it's definitely got a place for it, but I do want something that's just a bit more, yeah, gritty to pull me through. But like I said, we've got 120 pages left, who knows, it might end on a really dark note or we might start getting some of that, more of that, I don't know. I, you can definitely tell that this is a series and that this is a build-up book and giving you that background, understanding the magic system and where we're trying to head with all of this because there's no way that everything in this book is going to be wrapped up in 120 pages and I feel like if it is it just puts the pacing out of whack completely so definitely part of a series and I am intrigued because of those two different perspectives that we've had that gives it that little bit of like oh I want to see what's going on there I want to know how our characters are going to react to all of that but it's just getting there it's just getting there but yeah so finishing this tomorrow and then that leaves me with what do I read for the rest of the week and I'm just not sure. I feel like I'm actually going to be really ahead with this month's TBR so I had six books on it. This will be the second book and I've got two books that are really short on that TBR so that only leaves me with two other books which one of the books is what you guys pick which I won't be reading that until a bit later in the month because I like to give plenty of time for anyone that's watching the video a bit late to make a vote and then yeah that's it. So there's really just... Not much, so I feel like I'm going to be finishing the TBR quite early. Obviously I'm going to finish all the books that are on my TBR first before I start reading other stuff, but yeah. Anyway, we'll see where it gets to. I don't know, I don't know whether I want to carry on with another YA book or whether I want to change it up a bit after this. I don't know, I haven't decided. We'll see. Um, I also want to change up my shelves because it's just, I don't know, I'm not in love with them. But that's a thing for another day. That's it, we're in tired ramble territory which is where I just make no sense at all. So I'm going to stop talking, I am going to cook myself some food because I'm getting a bit hungry and then like I said the next update will be me finishing this and deciding what I actually read next because I just don't know. I don't know why I haven't filmed here before, I really like this. I mean this stack of books here, not normally here, that's for a video that will get filmed at some point. It's driving me insane having the mess, but it's fine. I actually quite like this. This is a nice little area. I should do this more often. Let me know in the comments below. Do you like this? I feel like it's quite cute. I have my lamp on in the background, which is why there's this weird glow, which maybe I didn't need, but I can't bother to turn it off now. It's just, it's on, it's happening. Tangent aside, I finished Into the Crooked Place, and can we know that's the first time I've said that title right? I just kept saying crooked. I don't know why I kept saying crooked. It's crooked. And yet, anyway, I liked the ending of this book. It was fast paced. There was a lot going on. Everything went wrong. There was a lot of, I wouldn't say really high stakes, but definitely more high stakes than what we've been getting in this book. And it has intrigued me enough that I want to pick up the second book to see how it goes. Overall, I would say this book was just a nice, fun fantasy YA book. 
It's not too deep in the fantasy side of things, so a good place to start if you're new to fantasy. And as I said, it is a bit predictable. A lot of the twists and things that were happening at the end of the book, I had already predicted. Some of them were new, but a lot of them I already guessed that that's what was going to happen, which is not a bad thing. It's just, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I think, I think that really covers it in this. I think the second book for me is going to be whether I continue on if it's more than just a duology. I want that second book to hold what we had at the end of this book, which was that darker feeling to it where things are going wrong and the stakes are a bit higher. If we go back to where it feels very easy for our main characters, then I just don't think I'm going to carry on past the second book again if there is one. I don't know if this is a series, if it's just trilogy, duology, quartet, I've got no idea how long it's going to be. But you can definitely see that this is book one, it is a build-up book, you're being introduced to the world, your characters, the magic system, and the start of this plot line. So yeah, I think it's a good starting point. I do think a lot of people would like it, especially if you want that easier, I wouldn't say younger fantasy book, but just easier in terms of the magic system. If you're just getting into it, I think it would be quite a good one. And if you like like an urban setting where the characters are, honestly, none of them are good characters. They're all bad in their own ways, then I think it would be a good one to try. So yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with this. Glad I read it. But now we have the question of what on earth do I read next? So actually being here is even easier because I'm debating between Happiness, which is manga that I've got for the month, which is like a vampire light horror manga. I don't think it's got anything too dark in it. Or Sherlock Holmes. I just don't know. I know this one, honestly, I'm going to be able to finish in about 30 to 45 minutes. So... This, this is an easy one and that's why I put it on my TBR and honestly why I don't pick up manga that often because it is such a quick read for me and then that means oh I finished it I want to know what happens next and they're so expensive. There was a load of thunder. I don't know if that my microphones picked that up but there was just a load of thunder. We're in for a thunderstorm. That's perfect reading weather. But I am so tired. Like these mornings are killing me because like I would come home and normally I'd like read and stuff. That's not happened this week. Everything that I've read this week has been while I've been on my way to work, while I'm on my lunch breaks and stuff, and while I'm on my way home. At home, no reading has happened at all. But thunderstorm, like it would be so good to read. Anyway, back to the dilemma. So yeah, I'm not sure because it is going to be quite a quick read and I don't have the second one and honestly it was actually really hard just to get this first volume. So I haven't read that. I mean, I suppose I could pick up something after. Anyway, that's going to be a quick read. But then also the same with the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes because it's a short book and I know, honestly, if I was to dedicate properly to this, this is probably going to take me about two, two and a half hours to read. Like it's not much at all. But I don't know, but I also don't want to go straight onto another YA book, which is the other book that's on my TBR until, I th honestly, probably beginning of next week, I'll tally up the votes for the books that you got to choose between, because those were two adult fantasies. But until then, I just don't know what to read for the weekend. Like, I've got, I say weekend, we're only on Wednesday. I, d I just don't know. Anyway. I don't know, it's probably going to be one of these two, I just haven't decided which, and I would honestly ask you guys, but I would have read it by the time you see this vlog, so that's not helpful. Um, but yeah, that, that's my dilemma, and now we have the dilemma of do I read tonight in a thunderstorm, because it'd be amazing, but I know if I start reading I'm going to fall asleep, but I don't have an early tomorrow, so... Ugh, dilemmas. Absolute dilemmas. And I'm also hungry, and I feel like I've said that, honestly, tired? and hungry a lot and how much I hate earlies. I feel like those are the three things that have been said a lot in this vlog. Um, but yeah, okay, that's done. The update is done. I finished a book. It was good. It was a fun, light read. Maybe a little bit too light in places, but overall enjoyable. And um, yeah, I don't know what to read next. I guess, I guess you will find out in a second and I will probably spend the evening debating what I'm actually going to read.
It's been a few days since I've updated. Honestly, I've just been busy. Thursday was just a day for me to catch up on things that I needed to catch up on. I didn't read much at all, but I did start memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. I mean, I say start, I read like 20 pages. I read the first short story and that was it on Thursday. But yesterday I had work and I did actually finish this book, my usual on the way to work, etc, etc. Although I did admit, the last story I saved for this morning, so I read it first this morning that I didn't do anything. The first thing I did was pick up this and read a short story in bed and oh my god, I definitely want to do that more. Like starting the day off with a nice short story is just setting the mood. I'm in such a good mood. I mean that could be because I have seven days off work, but aside from that, also starting the day off with a short story was just amazing and definitely something I'm going to do in future. I think I'm going to make that a goal to try and read a short story every morning because it was just ah, perfect. I loved it so much. I need to talk about this book. I really did enjoy this. Like I said, I read the first short story on Thursday and the first short story was all about this racing horse that had gone missing and there was this whole, obviously, mystery around that that Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson had to solve. But the bit that really got me was actually this bit. Is there any point to which you would wish to draw my attention? This was somebody else to Sherlock Holmes. And Sherlock Holmes says, to the curious incident of the dog in the night time. The dog did nothing in the night time. That was the curious incident, said Sherlock Holmes. And that line, the curious incident of the dog in the night time, I was like, I recognize that. I swear that's a book. So I looked it up and yes, it is a book and it is all inspired by that line in Sherlock Holmes and I'm just like, amazing, absolutely amazing. So I definitely have to get that book now. I have to read it. I have to see the influence and how it's impacted that book. I just, I'm so excited. It is a murder mystery and everything. I've clearly never read it. And yeah, now I have to, now I know where that is inspired by. I just, I have to. So that is definitely on my to get list now. Let me know if you've read it and what you thought of it because I definitely want to read it now. And then the rest of the short stories, I think I made a mistake with this, with reading it all in one go because apart from the first one and the last one, I read all nine others in one day. And I think the problem with that is it all meant they kind of blurred together and I didn't get the clear distinction. So the last collection of Sherlock Holmes books I read over the course of a month and I would read two to three, two times a week. And that was nice because it meant that they all felt distinct, they all had their own story. But having read all of them together like this, I do find they have blurred a bit. But one that I did really like was The Greek Interpreter. That was very good, very dark, and I really enjoyed that one. I thought it was very interesting the way it was done and probably the darkest out of this collection of stories, which I don't know what that says about me, but there we go. So I really liked that. And obviously the last one that I read this morning, the final problem where Professor Moriarty and Sherlock Holmes grapple on the cliffs. Very good. And this was actually meant to be the very last book Sir Arthur Conan Doyle ever wrote, but there was such an uproar about him not writing anymore that he did actually write another short story collection and the very final book. So that's all I've got left to go and ugh. Oh. I loved this. It was perfect. I have to admit, I did actually want to read Jane Austen. I was really, really feeling her writing. I think coming into spring, summertime, Jane Austen is just the author I gravitate towards now. But I didn't want to deviate from my TBR, so I picked up the only classic book that I've got like on this month's TBR. And yeah, I, I loved it. I thought it was really good. We all know I love the writing style and everything. It's just beautiful and that old English classic writing is just, it speaks to me. And my partner just goes to me, yeah, that's because it's calling out the Victorian lady in you. And I'm just like, maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, this was great. This also worked for a prompt from the Aurelium Readathon, which was spells and incantations where you had to read short stories, which obviously short story collection worked perfectly for that. But yeah, my only thing that I would do next time is make sure I read any short stories over the course of a month rather than actually fitting them all into one day just because it gives each story its own time to breathe, in my opinion. Oh, also, I didn't mention the shelving change. So on Thursday evening, I did change my shelves. I would film this process, but it's actually really awkward because what you see here is over my bed. 
and from this shelf down it's all blocked off by my bed plus on this shelf we're missing a shelf anyway so it's all blocked off it's really hard to actually film and on my other shelf on the other side of the room again you have access to the top three shelves but then the bottom ones are all half blocked by chest of drawers so it just makes it really awkward to film so I've just kind of given up trying to film any of that so I just showed you instead the pile of books that I had and then the finished product. I really like it. I've tried doing it so that these shelves are more my favourites. So we have like favourite fantasy books on these ones, retellings over here although you can't really see that and then Brandon Sanderson because Brandon Sanderson was always at the top but you never got to see him so I want him to have a little bit of light and yeah that's pretty- oh I've also created a shelf that is all my books to be read. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if it's going to stay that way because it's all a mess basically it's just all different genres all thrown together just on one shelf so that I know that when I do my TBR game that's where I'm going to be looking um whether it lasts or not I don't know I don't know I can't I, I don't think I like it but I am going to try it for a couple months to see how it goes but yeah so I think I think that's everything I am actually going to wrap up the vlog here we're at the start of my week off but I want to finish it here and then I'm going to be starting a brand new vlog and I've got so many plans for my time off. I'm so excited. So yeah. Well, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've all had a great week. Let me know what you've been reading, doing, all the usual things. If you have made it this far, then let's put a little dancing emoji because I am in a good mood today. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.